Hey guys, Drill Sprunt, I'm back. I know I've been gone for about a month. Just been busy doing life stuff, but uh, today, hoping to get a little bit done on this uh, mini off-road mower project I've been working on. The mower, or the motor I should say, is just kind of sitting there. Uh, I'm getting ready to hopefully mount that in this episode, update, whatever you want to call it. Over here, this is kind of one of the reasons I've been uh, sort of MIA, is I've been collecting a slew of parts. You can see I got air filter, New carburetor, it's attached to the intake manifold kind of temporarily. Brand new exhaust and a full wiring harness. And when I mean full wiring harness, I mean complete. Like it's got the solenoid, the stator, it's even got the thumb switch that goes on the handlebars. On off, start, and it even has a headlight toggle, which I don't have headlights. Um, coil and spark plug. It even comes with a key switch. Pretty handy. CDI box, voltage regulator, everything. So hopefully I won't need much more in the way of parts to do this. And I apologize for the wind that you're certainly going to hear throughout this uh, video because it is really windy today, but I'm not going to sit inside my house and twiddle my thumbs waiting for the wind to stop because Lord knows it's not going to. So I'm going to get to work. Um, I'm going to show you a couple little uh, boneheaded mistakes I've made on the build so far and we're going to have to figure out what to do about those. All right, so boneheaded mistake number one. Do you see what's wrong with this picture? Do you see anything at all that might cause something to not work in my favor? Here's a hint. This is gravity feed carburetor. Where's the fuel tank? Yeah, so fuel tank is too low. It would need to be like up here, the bottom of it, to feed this carburetor, and that's, that's not gonna happen. Is that a fuel pump? Now I'm not putting a fuel pump on this thing because that adds, uh, you know, its own reliability issues. And here's issue number two. Um, not really a mistake that I made, but something I short-sightedly didn't notice. But when this chain is going to run down to the sprocket, I had a little collision issue right here. So I think what I'm going to actually do is cut this plate in a little bit and slide this motor back an inch or two. So at full droop, full axle droop, my chain will be about there. It'll probably still slap this piece of metal a little bit. Um, I can probably protect it with a chunk of nylon or just like an idler pulley, plastic flat-faced idler pulley, and just kind of mount it below there. Um, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm just going to slide the motor back a little bit. And uh, the top of it's actually okay. It goes right over the swing arm, no problem. It goes underneath the swing arm, no problem. It's just it's colliding with that little engine mount thingy. I didn't think to look at that initially, I guess, but hindsight is always 20-20. But with all that being said, you know, we're going to try to push forward and make some progress today. I want to get this engine mounted, locked down. Well, there, we got that ugliness chopped off there, as well as uh, about a one inch long or one inch wide uh, strip of metal. Man, this wind just will not stop. I apologize. But now we can uh, work on mapping out, mapping out some bolt hole locations and hopefully get that motor pinned down into the frame. So this is the bolt pattern. It's, uh, it's kind of odd. It's not exactly metric and it's not exactly standard. If it is, it's, it's like 30 seconds of an inch. But uh, I think we got the layout pretty much drawn out here so let's try drilling some holes see if we can get it right all right so we got all of our holes drilled hopefully in the correct area the holes are a tiny bit oversized so i got a little bit of wiggle room but We'll see if they line up with the motor. There we go. Engine is mounted. And it looks so tiny on this frame. It's ridiculous. Little 125cc three speed motor. You can see right there. 124 cubic centimeters. I think it's relatively straight. Looks good to me. Um, it's just the four bolts on the bottom. Still gonna do that one and that one. But underneath here. I was originally going to put another piece of angle steel across the front, but the clearance between the front of these bolts and the steel 
And this piece, I don't know if you can tell, this this like bolt, it's like a sleeve in here that bolts the two case halves together. That actually bulges down, which is why that had to be cut so close to where the bolts actually bolt in. So I can't really get a piece of angled steel in there. But I'm not really worried about it. I think that steel is like 3 16 thick. It's pretty thick. So I don't think it's going anywhere. And like I said, that combined with the two rear mounts, I think it'll be okay. Um, but I still got plenty of room for my shifter. Plenty of clearance there, so that's good. Um, but yeah, now we can move on. All right, so now that the engine is mounted, I can focus on mounting the seat. And you see I've got two one inch square tube steel uh, pieces tack welded to the frame. This is the beginnings of what's essentially going to be the seat support and also the rear swing arm shock mount. And actually, I'm probably going to tie in the rear motor mount and maybe even the upper motor mount into that uh, whole thing as well. So this thing's gonna be, it's gonna have to be pretty stout. So I got some thick wall tube steel I might run something from right here just in front of the motor, but I don't want to trap myself to where I can't get the engine back out. But uh, yeah, I gotta weld this stuff up and hopefully we'll have a seat mounted. So I removed the motor just so I could weld without getting uh, slag and splatter all over my nice new engine. Uh, so I got her out of harm's way, but you can see I was actually planning initially on putting some more uprights in front of the motor, but as I looked at it, I was going to essentially trap the motor in the frame and never be able to remove it. So what we're doing now is I've actually got a three foot piece of that square tube steel, and it's going to mount, weld it right up to the top of that upper shock mount, basically right here on the other side respectively, and it's going to run straight back to this seat upright post. And that's going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to help me be able to mount my seat. Number two, it's got a little bit of overhang here, so I'm going to be able to mount my uh, rear swing arm uh, suspension. And number three, as you can imagine, the structural integrity will be a lot better uh, with this upper mount. It'll basically give it two points of uh, contact between the front and the rear. As you know, most four-wheelers, they're all you know, triangulated against themselves because they use cheap, smaller steel and all that stuff. So what we're basically doing here is building our own sort of upper structure. You can see where the old one used to come off, but uh, we're just gonna build this new one and that should aid in uh, helping fight a lot of frame flex. So let me keep welding this and hopefully by the end of this video, we will have a seat mounted. So there you have it. Seat is mounted and I put the engine back on. There's obviously this upper frame thing that I just did is not completely done. But it does give me a lot of opportunity to mount other things, maybe even the gas tank. Um, we'll see. I gotta check a bunch of stuff. Uh, the only thing I didn't do that I wish I had time to do was mount this rear swing arm. But that's just gonna get attached right in here, right basically straight across. Once I establish the ride height, which is pretty much level right now, so we're just about there. So obviously, we're making progress. Just gotta figure out where I'm putting my feet. Um, obviously mounting the rear shock, exhaust, gas, battery, uh, all the electrical. There's still quite a bit to do. Brakes, obviously, that's probably a big one. Um, but generally speaking, I'm glad to actually be able to sit on it right now. Uh, it's weird. It's very weird. I'm sitting in a lawnmower seat in kind of a lawnmower position on what seems to be an ATV. I don't really know what you call this thing. I call it the mini off-road mower, but it's really not mini anymore. Um, throw some ideas at me. What would you guys call this thing? I really don't know what to call it. It's it's not really an ATV. I mean, it's got an ATV motor and suspension, but you're sitting weird. It's The frame's all cobbed together. I don't know what you call it. So needless to say, I'm spent. So if you guys enjoyed the video, as always, leave me a like. I really appreciate it. And uh, leave me a suggestion for a name. I'd like to like to have someone come up with something cool that I can start calling this thing. But uh, until the next video update, see you next time.